solve, graph the solution set, and write the solution in interval notation. So first, we're going to solve this absolute value inequality. So what we do is we write just what we see without the absolute value. Or, now our next inequality is going to be x minus 2 is less than negative 5. So it's the opposite of the inequality, and then it's the opposite of the number. So then our next step is just to solve just like it was an equal sign. So I'm going to add 2 to both sides of the inequality. So x is greater than 7. Or I'm going to do the same thing here. Add 2. x is less than or less than negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. So now I'm going to graph it. Now you don't have to write every single number you've ever learned on this um, number line. The only ones we really care about are negative 3, so I'm going to put a negative 3 about here, and your 7, so we'll put a 7 about here. There are some instructors that want you to put all the numbers in there, um, they want them evenly spaced, so make sure that you ask before um, you make your number line. So I'm going to look at the first one, x is greater than 7. Now sometimes it's helpful to write in my other numbers here, just on each side of 7. Now x is greater than 7. How I know this is a greater than, let's go up here. When I was in grade school, they always said it was an alligator. And the alligator wants to eat the bigger number. Okay, so that tells me that x has to be bigger than 7. So if I look here. Is 6 bigger than 7? Nope. So that's not going to be in my solution set. Is 8 bigger than 7? Yes. So that will be in my solution set. So that's how I know that it's going to go this way. And it's really helpful if you make it kind of dark so I know which way you're going. So let's graph that one. So let's graph the other one. So here I'll have negative 4 and negative 2. Now x is less than negative 3, so if we use the alligator idea, the alligator is eating the bigger number, which is negative 3. So we want x to be smaller than negative 3. Is negative 2 smaller than negative 3? No, it's actually bigger. Negative 4 is smaller than negative 3. So I know that's the direction I want to go in. Once again, make this really dark. Now you noticed I used an open circle for both of them because it's not equal to that number. Okay, so our final job is to write the solution in interval notation. Now this part, students get mixed up, but I'm going to show you how I do it. It's so easy. I look here. This, is, this does not equal negative 3. It's an open circle. Open circles are always a parentheses. And this number is negative 3. Now I look. Where is it going to? Well, it's actually going to negative infinity. So that's what goes on the left side. Okay? This means negative infinity to negative 3. Doesn't include them. Um, union means we're going to put these together. Now I do the same thing. This is not including, so it's a parentheses, 7. And then where is it going to? It's going to infinity. So that's what goes here. Now remember, we don't have a number for an infinity because any number you pick, I can pick a number that's higher. So that's why we have a parentheses here. Solve, graph the solution set, and write the solution in interval notation. So here's our problem. So what we do is we write what we see, the original, without the absolute value. Then we write it as x plus 3. We change the sign. Now we just change the direction of the sign. And we change this to its opposite, which is negative 1. Now we're going to solve just like as if this was an equal sign. So I'm going to subtract 3 to both sides of the inequality. So x is less than or equal to negative 2. Or, uh, once again, I'm going to subtract 3. So x is greater than or equal to negative 4. So I just solved them. 
So now I'm going to make my number line. Okay. Um, you don't have to put every single number on this number line. Some instructors want you to do it, some don't care. Me, important to me is that you know that we're going to be graphing negative 4 and negative 2 because those are two really important points here. Whoops, we should probably make this negative 4. And this is a negative 2 because negative 4 is smaller than negative 2. Solve, graph the solution set, and write the solution in interval notation. So first of all, I'm going to rewrite this as x plus 3 is less than or equal to 1. The original without the absolute value symbols. And x plus 3 is greater than or equal to, now this sign just changes directions, and this becomes the opposite, negative 1. Now I'm going to solve just like this was an equal sign. So I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. So x is less than or equal to 1 minus 3 is negative 2. And once again, subtract 3 from both sides. x is greater than or equal to negative 4. So let's graph that on our number line. Since we have an and, we know that it has to happen at the same time. So let's graph x is less than negative 2. Now how I remember that's a less than symbol is, do you remember the alligator? The alligator wants to eat the bigger number. So here's the bigger number, here's the smaller number. So x has to be smaller than negative 2. So I'm going to put in my negative 2 here, and I'm going to also have a negative 4, so we might as well put that guy in. So x is less than or equal to negative 2. Since it's equal to, I'm going to put a dot and make my line towards the less than. Now I'm going to go over here. x is greater than or equal to negative 4. This side is the side the alligator wants to eat, so it has to be bigger. Since it's an equal than, equal to, greater than or equal to, it's going to go to the right. Now since this is an and, I want everything that I have both of these lines in. So it's all in here. Okay? In here. So how I'm going to write my interval notation is what's happening on the left, it includes negative 4. Yep, so that's going to be a bracket, negative 4, and it goes to negative 2. And that's also a bracket because it includes it. Solve, graph the solution set, and write the solution in interval notation. So I have the absolute value of 2x plus 5 is less than or equal to negative 4. Now this is a trick question. Let's think about this for a second. Can an absolute value ever become negative? No, because absolute value means the distance from 0. From 0. So this can never be a negative 4. So for this one, there is no solution. And some instructors like to put this on there just to see if they can trick you. But don't let them trick you. 